So back with the war against... Oh, very good. We have to play them around a little bit. Um... Stay on your side of the forest, come on, people. Rocket science. We will attack them, we are, we are stronger, but we need to press the advantage as long as we have it. Not going to be easy. Alright, so now we need to re siege real quick. Uh, what we could try is ask the Pope for some money. But that doesn't look like it's an option for us. So what other options do we have to make a quick buck? Um, not many. Honestly, we've exhausted this. We could kick out the Jews, too. That gives us some more money. But it reduces our national tax. So, honestly, I, I feel like the Jews have to suffer this one. So, we will kick them out. We lose prestige. Our national tax modifier goes down by 10%. And our diplomacy goes down by 2 And it's going to stay like that for a long time until I invite them back. Um, oh, we're also unmarried. I, th I believe my wife was a... No, she wasn't a Jew. <gasps> she died of cancer. That is so unfortunate. Okay, now is the time to probably go for a Mongol bride. Okay, let's go by culture. And let's check out the Mongol women there. Maybe we can actually find a... Adult one. It doesn't look like it. They're all pretty young. Oldest is 12. Doesn't matter though. We can wait another four years. Hopefully, if we survive. So let's have her. Which gives us also a non-aggression pact with one Mongol leader. We will stop leading armies to re reduce the amount of uh, chance of us dying. Armies that are led by you directly do get a morale boost, so it is worthwhile sometimes to do it. But not always. Okay. Can we get an alliance with you? No, we cannot. Do you somewhat like us now? No, you do not. <laughs> ah, well. Okay, time to speed this up again. Because... Again, just a sieging game. Unless they hire something, they will stay lesser than us, and we will just have to keep pushing back against them. Oh, very good. A special tie was taken in our capital. Let's see, can we get in here without crossing a river? Yeah, from the north. That's really important, looking at the territory and the geography of the land that you're going to fight in so what we're going to do is we go north and then we how i do this by the way like you do it in most strategy games you hold down the shift key to plan a path so they don't just go the most direct route but follow a certain pattern that you lay out for them always make sure that your commanders are still in place because sometimes they get shifted around and goes by rank um so if you had a commander of higher rank that is not leading anything right now, they might supersede a higher skilled commander on the battlefield. So that is also why with a minor title of commander, you might want to consider not putting too many high ranking people who have a very low skill in there just to fill the commander slot. Right? There's someone called Dry Throat and I like it. So he's raising some more troops up there now. 
Uh, he has a grand total of 4,000 troops. Okay. So we need to immediately move north. Because he raised some more troops somewhere, somehow. And we need to prevent him from linking these up. In any way possible. Uh, we need to move real quick. Because if he can consolidate his forces, we are pretty much out of luck. So this was the right move at the right time. We now get the defensive bonus because we defeated his army before his reinforcements arrived. It might still turn out badly for us because our troops are already suffered the morale reducing effects from just having fought another battle. But this is also important. Just check on your enemy. Don't trust that things are going to be fine. Right? Uh, we will aim for a white piece in this. We are not going to go for a win. Uh, I don't believe that we can. I mean, it would be nice. 740 gold, that would be perfect. We could get back the um, the Jews. But it's, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely to happen. Let's real quick check if maybe we can't get a marriage from one of our neighbors out here. Um, we would have to break the patrol. Okay, that's fine. So he has more reinforcements coming, but our our lines are holding real strong. So we have beaten him back here, which is very important. Now we have to immediately attack the next stack that we didn't fight yet. Militarily speaking, this is going really well, but only because we are watching out for things. Okay, we are, we're making the right moves, we're making the right decisions. If there's a small pack, just attack, 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 attack. Even if you are in a worse position than they are. At this point, you would probably want to slow down the game speed a bit. Okay. Now, they are stronger than us. Uh, let's check this real quick. We will arrive... We will arrive on the 1st of July. They will arrive on the 6th. So, we get the defensive bonus again. If they pursue... Let's check if we can get a white piece. Okay, we can get a white piece. Now, this is a critical deciding moment. Do we trust that our army that has pretty weakened morale, his also has a bit of a weakened morale. Let's check. How many troops does he have, really? 3,400. So the maximum he can throw at us is 200 more than we have. We get the really, really strong defensive bonus of mountains. Okay. One thing more. Now we're not going to get a new commander in five days. I don't. I don't think. But uh, we, we'll try. We'll try. So let's get this up. Let's check. If we could find a mountainous terrain leader, that would probably. Okay. So I'm taking a gamble here. We have reached white peace. We could get white peace. We will take this gamble. We have enough gold to do the whole mercenary trick one more time. But after that, we're out. We're absolutely out. We can't... ...do much. Yeah, we're pretty much stuck in our position. We're pretty much stuck. So they, they keep coming. They are attacking. And we're beating them back once more. We're winning again. So this was fortunate, very fortuitous. But as I said, if we keep this up, we have to keep the pressure up. We can't let them rally. We can't allow them to consolidate their troops. This has to be a continuous battle now. We have a new heir. And our realm will shatter. That's not ideal. What's going on? Okay, my father died. And now my brother has inherited this. How will our realm shatter? The Duchy of Armenia Minor goes to him as well as the County of Adena and we will only keep the Kingdom and this. So he will get the Duchy, we will keep the Kingdom title and this with our current succession law. Not ideal. Our brother is a strong vassal and he needs a spot on the council. He shall have it. What is he good at? Can we put him here? No. 
So ideally we put him as our spy master. Let's check. Oh, we are his heir. So now that he's our spy master, what we want to do is we, s we want to send him somewhere dangerous. <laughs> uh, for that, we could check if there's any pandemic somewhere. Yes, there are. So we have camp fever here. And we send him to spy anywhere there. Sadly, no. So we have to look for some pandemic around here. Ah, there's some camp consumption. Very good. There's consumption close by. We can send them to spy somewhere where there's consumption and a rebellion and everything. So this is one of the worst places for him to be to do his job right now. We're doing a whole lot of things here which are really important. Uh, this, in, this, this recording is packed with information. Real good information, I think. So we are still in pursuit of his army trying to root him out. Um, we're going to do a little trick, small trick. We are going to use our chancellor to sow dissent. Um, it doesn't matter really where. What we want to do it for is we're going to put him here. What it gives us is sight into this one piece of the world. We are also going to use our patriarch to prove religious relationships. Not. Ah, I hope that would work. Um, oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah, and I think that's really the most we can do. We can also use our spy master to set someone. He gets a better viewing radius. Like if you put your spy master into one of those counties, he sees all the adjacent counties as well, which can really help in a war where you lose sight of your enemy. Because currently, I don't know where his troops are. He has 2,400 and they're somewhere here. And I believe we should pursue. We're beating these 200, which is good. And there are his 1,000 something. We will attack him again. He gets the defensive bonus. Okay, he's locked in, he can't get out, but he will get the defensive bonus. However, we will have the overwhelming numbers. Oh! Grand! Grand, grand, grand. Real good. Fortunate events. Fortunate new events. Real good. Our ally has actually reformed his army and sent us new troops. Now he only has to send them to us. That, that would be great. Like, join up with our army. He will eventually do it. Um, okay, my court physician, latest ideas, um, yeah, let's, let's allow him to write a book on it. Where is he going? Okay, we need to be careful that our ally doesn't get caught out. Perfect, perf perfect again. Things are great. So we arrive on the 20th of April, they arrive two days earlier. So we will attack them in an unfavorable position, but we get a thousand people joining us. A thousand men strong army is joining us in this battle as he only is joined by his 500 something. And someone jumped in front, but we have this. You two look at it. Oh. For once, this is going really well. For once, this is going really well. We need to start sieging as well and try and get away from those huge armies. We're going to siege his capital. This is what we're going to do. Just to put a bit more war score on our side. Sieging is dangerous. As you see, our numbers just dropped there because um, the besieging army can lose troops due to the defenders employing some outbreak tactics, stuff like that. But we're going to just take one piece of his capital, which should give us a lot of war score. And then we go back down. And we want to attack. Let's check. How can we get in here without getting crossing a river? Yeah, 
the north. So we go through this. Attack him again. Oh, we need... Oh. We have a defensive unyielding. That's good. That's really good. With these two already leading. And that's the next best we've got. Let's check the world if we can't find better, newer commanders for our armies. Doesn't look like it. Ah, this is a difficult one. The defensive bonus is really strong. We, we might as well have lost that one. That was real close. That was a dangerous gamble that we took there. That was really dangerous. Also, we ourselves should consider standing down our armies, which we're going to do right now. And then raise them back up stronger. Um... I hope that works. It should work. We're going to stand down our armies. And raise them back up. To have a stronger army as well. I never do this. This is literally the first time in almost 700 hours of playing Crusader Kings where I've done this. The AI does it all the time. Um, so you whittle down your troops over time. And the AI constantly reinforces. But this is a game-changing moment right now. Doing this at this point in time where we just defeated the enemy, where we already have the numerical superiority. Oh no. Shame, our physician didn't do much with his medical thoughts. Now, well, I, I don't want to say we're unbeatable, but um, to him, we're certainly quite the threat. Okay, I'm going to invite this 8-point commander because he's also a Lightfoot leader. Which is better than an 8-point commander who's not also an, uh, a Lightfoot leader. This is getting me all excited. This is one of the best maneuvering and strategic gameplay in terms of a war I have ever done in this game. I'm really, really, really proud of that. Um, it's really good. Okay, let's get... Ooh, Our brother has become an organizer as well. Meaning our troops move quicker. Uh, but he can't be deployed as a commander because he's also currently working for us in his administrative council position. So let's get him to replace someone. And he will go on the flank here. Because we do have a bit of light but in the army. So let's see what he does. He's either going to siege here or he's going to... Re Try and retake his own. And we will bless our people. Ah oh, no, he's going to go for our capital. Which is nice because he doesn't get any bonuses fighting there. However... He really needed that. The bonuses that he didn't get. Okay. Found a great philosopher. Could get 50 cultural tech points. Um, do we need them for anything? Legalism, don't really need that currently. Majesty would be nice, but we're way far away from that. Oh, that's too expensive. So we need to put our guy on improving religious relationships. Let's do it at home because why not? So we're slowly putting down his sieges. He will probably do the same thing again because the AI is an AI, right? They don't know any better. So we wait for him to lock in onto his movement, then we attack again. Okay, he has just... Oh, that is lovely. Okay. He has just raised a mercenary army. They're really low on morale. So even if we attack him here, let's see how when we arrive 28th. So we arrive before they get here. Or can we even get them there? 
27th, 3rd. Okay, we need to speed this down real quick. Just in case he stops his movement so we can attack him. No, he's committing. He's committing to this. So this might look bad, but with the defensive bonus and the low morale of the mercenaries when they are first raised, this might just work out. Might just work out. It's a gamble again. But it's a gamble I'm kind of willing to take. Our flank here is doing not so hot, so that's bad. Okay, another one declared war on us. So we have to white peace out. There's nothing we can do anymore. We might have gotten further. But we have to white peace out. Stand down our troops here. Call in our dear tributary friend. Because we have a new war against us. So how many troops can we raise right now? Okay, we can give it a little bit more time. A little bit more time is our training troops. Okay, we can marry, so we definitely should. Okay, let's raise our troops. Not ideal. We have enough money to also get mercenaries. And I believe we should early on. And I think we will go with the Bulgarian band again. We will not be able to afford them long. Who's even attacking us? Is it Odessa? No. Yeah, it is. It is Odessa. Okay, so they're right next to us. So we will use the mercenaries to immediately... Like, literally immediately attack. Once our troops are joined up. Can't get an alliance with him, sadly. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, we need to put our troops together here. Because he might just walk right onto there. And we don't want to have our troops brought out anywhere. There we go. Let's put the right people in charge. Best leader gets center. Second best leader gets flank. He needs a cavalry strong flank. So this one is his. And the light foot leader goes here. We arrive 20th of May. They arrive 23rd of May. So we steal defensive bonus up here. Oh no, we don't. There's another army. No, it's his army. Can we steal here? 28th of May, 15th of May. Okay, we need to we need to fight them. I'm not so sure with my morale. That's we'll wait for the ally to join and then we fight them. They're going to fight eventually. Okay, let's get them there. The desert, it's not ideal. But we need to get rid of our mercenaries. Ah, he's still sowing distrust, so let's sow some distrust there. Once we win this battle, immediately down with the mercenaries. Because as you see, even with the mercenaries, it's a close one.
The mercenaries go away. What is this? Oh, they're not joined by anyone. What is this? These are just raiders. It will ignore the raiders and go straight for his capital. This time we're in a better position than in the last holy war against us. Because he doesn't have anything sieged of ours yet. And we decisively beat his army as it cropped up the first time. Um, yeah, this is a bad idea for a battle. So we will go like this. That's going to be a little bit better. No river crossing there, I think. Yeah, no river crossing there. He's moving away. We need to go here and then south. Okay, let's speed it up a little bit more. More distrust being sown between him and his levies. Vassals, rather. Okay, this is a hard one. Again. As you see, we lost one flank, but luckily, both of his broke earlier than ours. Because he has one huge flank, and it's kind of... The numbers are kind of mixed here. Due to how the armies are composed. So that's very understandable how that happens. But it looks scary in the moment. What we could do is how to balance our unit, but it's not going to do much. Already fairly balanced. Good. Move a little bit more over here. So we have... How is that auto-balanced? I ask you. One huge army over there. This is a bit more balanced. Alright, so... We could go for a white piece as well. But this time we're going to try and press for the victory. Wow, this has been already very exciting, uh, trying to deal with this. We, we did a few really majorly important plays early on, getting ourselves in a halfway good position. We were lucky that none of the kings themselves attacked us, but only some duchies around here. But we're in a pretty precarious state still. We need to be careful. If we can beat him... Uh, we get a major infusion of cash preparing us for the next few battles ahead. Uh, allowing us to maybe put more of these kingdoms into a tributary state toward us. Which would then allow us to, you know, act a little bit more independently. Which would be lovely. But right now, what we really need is an heir. So I hope our wife is uh, willing she has a bloodline too, which goes into both matrilineal and patrilineal. So our heir will have the bloodline of Temujin the Butcher, which is nice. <laughs> All right. Oof. I'm excited. I don't think maybe you can hear it, but this is really quite exciting. Um, it could have gone really, really wrong. There were some touch-and-go moments there so far, but, uh, well, we'll see what is going to be ahead. We are right now really relying on winning this war. Uh, let's check our troops real quick. Do we get anything better if we stand them down? No. We would have to walk all the way over here to stand down without losing troops, because if you stand on troops in the enemy territory, only about 50% of them return home to be raised again. So, the standing down, standing them back up, is a gamble that you're not really capable of doing outside your own realm. In a defensive war, it can work. It is a defensive war, but we turn it offensive. If we, for some reason, lose this because he does... No, well, he doesn't have enough gold to get himself some mercenaries. And his levies are pretty exhausted. So right now, he's not a threat to us. But if the sieges go wrong, 
check for a siege master. If the sieges go wrong, we might always sue for a white piece. That is always in the cards for us. Still no one who is capable of helping us with sieges. All right.